Welcome to WTSA, the World Telecommunications Standardization Assembly being held here in New Delhi in India. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Dr. Bilal Jamusi, who is the Deputy Director for TSB, as well as being Chief of the Telecommunications Standardization Policy Department. Bilal, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Max, for having me. Now, WTSA, it's, a, it's a been an extremely successful event so far. What have been your impressions? It's been amazing. Uh, it brought the world standards developers and uh, governments, private sector, academia, to develop new resolutions, uh, appoint new leadership team for the next study period. Uh, and really, in addition, we had an amazing number of side events that showcased the ITU standards in action. Uh, and allowed uh, you know, companies and uh, governments to demonstrate how the ITU standards help in the, uh, bridging the digital divide, help in connecting the world, and help in uh, achieving sustainable digital transformation. What are the particular outcomes that you would like to come from this year's WTSA? The first one is the restructuring of the uh, sector uh, to have more nimble and uh, effective study groups uh, and we're very pleased to see that the consolidation of uh, two study groups into one uh, to have more focus on multimedia and cable networks uh, is, uh, is being achieved and approved. Uh, the second is to have a new vibrant leadership team uh, for the next study period with various chairs, uh, achieving a more uh, gender balance. Uh, we have a 100% increase in terms of women uh, leaders, uh, which is a chair of the study group. Um, and of course, the third one is uh, the, th the new resolutions on uh, topics of great interest to industry, to government, to the, uh, the whole world. Um, new resolutions such as the artificial intelligence, a resolution on um, digital public infrastructure, um, on uh, emergency location. Uh, when, uh, God forbid, one is in an accident, the uh, location is shared with the emergency services. Um, uh, new resolutions on um, metaverse. So we're quite excited on uh, that the, uh, our membership found consensus on these uh, critical topics, which, uh, of course, we look forward to the final approval at the closing plenary of the Assembly. But so far, there is a great consensus on these new and emerging topics uh, that are critical for the world. Now, ITU is the United Nations Agency for Technology. Of course, with the United Nations, one of the most uh, key elements or one of the most key, key goals, shall we say, are the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Let's talk about uh, how standards can contribute to the UN Sustainable Goals, particularly with regards to social good. Um, great question. The um, social good, for example, in terms of uh, digital health. Uh, is one example where we have a lot of uh, work with our uh, partners at the World Health Organization. And uh, concretely, we developed uh, jointly with WHO uh, a standard on safe listening. And as you know, the youth today spend a lot of time listening to audio, video, uh, watching movies and so on. Uh, and so the, um, the hearing uh, impact has been significant in terms of hearing loss because of the duration and the volume of the audio that, uh, that kids and, and, and adults uh, are spending. And that can happen quite quickly as well. People don't realize that. But exactly. It can in an hour of listening, perhaps, uh, people can actually uh, have considerable hearing loss. Absolutely. And it's irreversible. Once we have hearing loss, you cannot go back. Uh, so this standard has been one of the focus areas here at the Assembly through a side event that we had uh, jointly organized with the WHO. And just to explain the standard in a, in a very uh, easy way, imagine you're driving a car uh, and you don't have a speedometer, but once in a while you have a speed limit. And so if you don't have a speedometer, you don't know how, whether you're going faster or slower. Uh, the same way the standard that we have developed with WHO um, is a way to track how long you're listening and how loud you're listening. It's the combination of the two that then goes into the software of either the hearing device, uh, you know, like a headset, or it goes into the mobile phone uh, and alerts the listener that they have exceeded the safe listening limits established by the WHO and standardized technically by the ITU. So this is an element of standards that enable better well-being uh, of, of people around the world uh, on something that uh, we were able to develop jointly and uh, be able to impact the social uh, good in terms of the, the healthcare uh, and the well-being of uh, listeners. 
because the key, of course, is getting people to adopt those standards, not just uh, the consumers, but of course, industry as well. And industry have been gathered here, as well as academia and, uh, and other key stakeholders. Absolutely. The key is that uh, the standard is adopted. And that's why we wanted to do the showcase, do the side event at the India Mobile Congress to raise the awareness of the dangers of uh, extended listening and the benefit of implementing the uh, ITU WHO standard uh, to really to, to safeguard uh, the listeners around the world. So that was, uh, that was our objective, is to ensure that all the manufacturers and the software developers of Android or, or other uh, software that goes in the phones do take into account and implement the standard and for governments to be aware that the standard exists so they can use it in um, helping motivate the industry to, to implement the standard. Now, there have been a lot of side events here at WTSA. There's been a lot of the, the work that TSB does as well throughout the year, including AI for Good, uh, and other events like Kaleidoscope and various others. But uh, I wanted to, to focus on artificial intelligence and standardization. I wanted to ask you, how can standardization contribute to establishing a robust framework for AI um, that addresses issues like um, uh, bias, privacy, and, and security? Right. Well, the, uh, if you recall, just a few weeks ago, we had the Global Digital Compact adopted by heads of states and government at the UN uh, General Assembly in New York. Uh, the report of the high-level advisory body on artificial intelligence was published. And in both, there was a call for uh, standards organizations to collaborate on uh, AI standards and to really bring together a, a formula of uh, standards exchange, conformity at assessment, uh, etc. So we're very pleased that uh, here at the Assembly here in New Delhi, we launched uh, the uh, International AI Standards Summit uh, uh, hand in hand with our partners, the uh, International Standards Organization, ISO, uh, the IEC, uh, the uh, IEEE, the Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, the European Telecom Standards Institute. So basically we brought all the major international uh, regional and national uh, global standards development organizations to work on a collaboration framework uh, for AI standards. And particularly, we have a specific group working on the collaboration for uh, combating deepfakes and providing watermarking and multimedia authenticity, uh, a group that is looking at three facets of this issue. One is, is of course, the technical standards. Another is the policy and how to tie the policy with the standard. And the third is to communicate, because many of these standards do exist, uh, but uh, we need to ensure that the policymaker is aware of its existence and that the standards developing uh, organizations do it in a coordinated way, because as you know, deepfakes, they can touch video, audio, text, uh, and each of our organizations is working on a specific problem and a solution. Uh, for example, in the ITUT, we work on the multimedia authenticity of video uh, because the video codec, you know, 80% of the internet traffic is video using the ITU ISO IEC uh, joint standard on video coding. And if we can embed the authenticity mechanism in the video codec, uh, that's, that's a tremendous way, step forward. Uh, JPEG Trust, one of the partners around this uh, uh, collaboration, is working on the authenticity of images and ensuring that when you get an image with the JPEG trust, uh, you know that it's authentic. So these are some examples of concrete uh, multimedia authenticity standards that will help address the challenges that were identified in the Global Digital Compact and the overall broader perspective of AI governance. Standardization can have a significant impact on developing nations' access and participation uh, in AI advancements. Uh, how can uh, we ensure that AI standards are inclusive and promote equitable access to AI technologies for all countries? Indeed. Um, the, the work we are doing on standards is not only focused on the technical standards aspects, but also on um, uh, creating capacity, especially in developing countries with respect to uh, data science. Uh, students in developing countries participate in our challenges. We have a number of challenges that we launch over a three to six month period. Uh, and the best solutions to a set of problems that we announce 
receive monetary uh, rewards. And that has helped us uh, attract a, um, close to 20,000 students over a couple of years uh, from countries like Nigeria, Tunisia, and South America, many developing countries that do not necessarily have the data centers and the compute platform to implement artificial intelligence solutions. All they need is a connection and a laptop and a smart student motivated or, or a young professional who can join in a team formation uh, and uh, implement solutions to uh, the challenges. For example, um, we, we did one on machine learning for 5G. How can you orchestrate and manage a 5G network using machine learning and AI? And uh, have had a number of awards on that. The use of AI machine learning in um, climate change and how that could be used to mitigate certain uh, uh, climate uh, issues. So these, this series of challenges has been tremendous in capacity building to try to reduce the gap um, that AI could, uh, could widen uh, if we are not addressing it. So we also launched the AI Skills Coalition to have a coalition of uh, organizations, not only ITU, but other partners from private sector and industry to come together and address the uh, skills uh, shortage gap. Well, it's, this <laughs> event has been extremely successful. It's been a pleasure talking to you here. I just wanted to find out what's, what's next in uh, the TSB calendar. Well, a couple more days to approve all these resolutions. And um, next, uh, of course, we will uh, bring our new leaders, the chairs and vice chairs of the study groups that have been uh, appointed to uh, take them on board and do a training session so they are properly onboarded for the next four years. Excellent. Well, Dr. Bilal Jamusi, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. As I said, it's been a pleasure talking to you, as usual, and I look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Thank you, Max. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.